Welcome back, everybody. This is DDP, and it's uh, it's a belated game one post game. Things have been absolutely hectic here, but I wanted to get something out at least before game two. Game one of this chess match goes to the Thunder. Now, as we've seen thus far, Jason Kidd doesn't really like game ones. He's still winless. I think he's 0-5 now in game ones as the coach of the Mavericks. And, you know, I kind of understand why. But I'll give Jason Kidd this. He's very good at adjustments from game to game. It's almost like he has to see what the opponent has and then determine between games, how do we counter that? And counter it you must because... Buried in the middle of this 117-95 loss in game one was several concerning things for me. Now, first of all, something to point out just up front. As I tried to say throughout the year, as I tried to say before this series matchup, OKC is very good. It's not just that they have a fellow MVP candidate, Shea Gilgis Alexander, who finished second. Um, I'm not even talking about MVP voting right now beyond that. Luca third. There you go. That's the end of that. That I'll go into. But how OKC is constructed is very balanced. J-Dub is very good for them. Jalen Williams, very good for them. And he's absolutely a perfect complimentary number two option for them. So you have two guys that can absolutely handle their business, one of which is basically James uh, James Harden level uh, of foul hunting and getting to the line, converting, and all of that. All of that plus a just nails down lockdown defender in Lou Dort in that Dortcher chamber. Yeah, this was going to be a tough matchup. OKC's team defense is phenomenal. They were the number one three point shooting team in the regular season as well. So you see these sorts of things and you start to realize like, man, this is going to be really, really tough. And you know what? It's more than that because Dagonal is the coach of the year and he showed it in game one. Their game plan for throwing Dallas off its game was just perfection. Like it really was. It was a brilliant game plan because they essentially said, yeah, we're going to make everyone else beat us. Like those role players, we are going to concede those corner threes. And, and we talked about this, me and TMP, before the series started. OKC gave up almost 13% of its uh, threes from the corner, which was the most, I think, 30th yeah, in the league um, this past season. So we said, hey, there's an opportunity there. This is going to be a big series for Josh, for PJ, uh, for Derek Jones Jr., like, Tam Hardaway Jr., these are guys that have to step up. Well, here's the thing. Game one, they really didn't. Because OKC is so committed to clogging the paint, to block that lob pass for OK or for, for the Mavericks to make things uncomfortable for Luka Doncic as he gets to the rim. They're basically collapsing down five in the paint. And when Dallas is kicking out to the shooter, they're not hitting at a healthy enough clip. OKC says, yeah, you might get us every now and then, but we're not worried about Josh Green hurting us too bad. We're not worried about that. And it kind of reflected out because over the course of this game, Dallas shot just 12 of 35 from three. That's 34%. That's not, that's not going to get a job done. It's just not. So Luca started this game pretty hot. Took a little bit of a stumble. I've seen the clip. I would play it here, but I don't want copyright gods clapping down on the channel again uh he gets tripped by lou dort who shoots a three as luca's closing out appears to stick his foot out luca takes a hard fall and after starting like three of five uh with a couple assists he, he the rest of the way he's like three of 14 so a rough shooting day for luca six of 19 from the field still can't buy a three to save his life one of eight including this time this was the first game where the free throw shooting regressed he was six of 10 at the line so in 41 minutes, you get 19, 6, and 9 out of Luka. Again, OKC has a great game plan here. It's not just, hey, collapse down, literally turn our back to the corner shooter at times. They're, like Especially the guys who are like, oh, I'm on Josh Green. Oh, I'm on Derek Jones Jr. 
okay, well, if they're just going to stay out there and spot up, I'm coming down late uh, into the lane. I'm going to overcommit and overhelp so that they don't get that inside lob to Lively and to Gafford. By the way, Gafford had a fantastic game, 16 and 11 for Gafford. Now, only 5 of 12 from the field. Again, very low for him, but he had five blocks. So the dude was doing work. It just, the outcome, unfortunately, wasn't going to be what we were hoping for. And uh, Lively was actually very ho-hum here. 13 minutes, two points, four boards for him, one of three. Now, for Lively, I, I need to see more. This is this is the kind of series where I think he needs to have a bigger impact here. And Gafford, man, he, he's got to keep muscling through because especially Chet, OKC is not a team that rebounds well. So, yeah, Dallas got its rebounds. Dallas had the rebounding game. Uh, they Actually, they lost pretty handily. I was going to say they held close. No, they didn't. It was 52 to 39. But they did get 11 offensive boards. Unfortunately, they gave up 16. But Dallas could get to the glass, and they need to capitalize on those opportunities. And they just need to play stronger down low. It, sell, it felt too much. It's not just Chet that's a rim protector. J-Dub is good at crashing down. Shea got a block on the weak side on Gafford, I think, at one point. But back to how OKC is collapsing in the paint, they're essentially saying, hey, if Dallas is bringing the ball up and we're setting the screen at near half court, Chet has good enough foot speed that he's able to stick with Luka to meet him at that three-point line as Luka tries to go into his step back. And if he's essentially taking a runner or he's doing something drifting there, well, now you got him and Gafford out of position and OKC is hitting the bricks, going the other way in transition. That's where OKC bludgeons you. They force turnovers and they get out in the open court and they just convert. They're, they're very efficient running like that. So you got a guy that can be incredibly physical, smothering, a, a more physical. TMP had a good point on this. Lou Dort, Luca has said himself, is one of the three best defenders in the league. And while Luca's last game against him in which Dallas was really trying, uh, Lou Dort was not really a factor in that game. His strategy here and his physicality absolutely bothered Luca. That was a hundred percent healthy Luca. We don't have that right now. Adding two things, making it worse because it's a playoff series. He's had time to game plan and he has now the team's game plan strategy is better situated to contend with that. So when you're having to confront guys like, Chet, when Dallas is trying to run that high Luca pick and roll, you have somebody who is able to regress towards the basket, stay just enough with Luca, and actually get back, even if a lob is thrown in contest. There was a play, um, there was a play in the regular season where Luca got down into the paint and tried to throw that lob. And Chet literally, who was guarding Luca as he was throwing the lob, sees the ball go up, turns and jumps and meets Daniel Gafford as he's catching the lob and blocks it to go from being the guy guarding Luca in midair, turning and blocking Gafford on the put back on the, not the put back dunk, but on the alley-oop dunk is just insanity. Like Chet is a versatile enough defender for them to do a lot of things. And it's just throwing off the spacing that Dallas needs. So you have that kind of length. You have that kind of commitment from guys who are basically just like, look, I'm not going to worry about if Josh Green's going to stand in the corner and go, what did Josh Green go for the game? Josh Green was, he had 11 points. He was three of eight from three. They'll take that. They'll absolutely take that OKC will. Meanwhile, Derek Jones Jr. was one of three from three. Again, I'm not trying to diminish these guys, but we said coming in, you are going to have to get good shooting three-point shooting particularly from your role guys because teams are not going to let luca go downhill on them they're not going to allow luca room to breathe in the paint and the only way dallas can create that one you either just have to run something else offensively other than the luca high pick and roll or two you have to have your shooters knocking down those corner shots we talked a little bit about the shooting the three-point shooting for dallas in the first round it didn't end up sinking them but Dallas still does not have enough balanced three-point shooting. Derek Jones Jr. has made good strides the last couple of years in his three-point shot. He's still an average at best three-point shooter. He's still a guy that is somewhere right around league average. Uh, and Josh Green, man, that kid is, when his confidence is there, he's 40% from three. The problem is 
the confidence is so hit or miss. The kid is very, very much fluctuates in how confident he is. And when he's not confident, he'll clank it off the side of the backboard, shooting a corner three unguarded. Like it's bad. There's not consistency there. And that's the next step. He's got to evolve offensively speaking defensively. He's just got to navigate screens better, but they're just saying like, look, you're going to have to beat us. And that's why you need a Tim Hardaway burner game. You need him to catch fire and rein in threes, because that's the only thing that's going to give you the three, the balanced three point shooting that you need. Luca's got to wake up as best he can, as healthy as he can play. He's got to, he's got to have another game like his game four. I think it was against the Clippers. Um, He's got to have that kind of performance where he's not just putting all of this weight on Kyrie. Kyrie, 7 of 14 from the field, 3 of 4 uh, for 20 points. He, he's he got a... I, I, I've been saying this. I think Kyrie needs to be your primary point of attack. I, I think Dallas needs to make a shift here because the high pick and roll that's so central to what we do. OKC is just saying like, look, until you show us that your role players can knock down those corner threes or those open threes, they're rotating at times the wrong rotation just to make sure the not as good shooter takes it, that the more mediocre shooter of the two takes it. And there are times where Luca's dropping into the paint and all five Thunder players are compressing down on him and Lively or him and Gafford. And there's just nowhere to breathe. Now, Luca kind of picked up on this. And he was at times forcing the issue where he's like, okay, I'm going to hesitate. Like I'm going to bring the ball back out. And then I'm just going to try and blow back by you because OKC with uh, like case and Wallace, for instance, at times they're helping when Luca's just trying to drive in, they're helping from 15 feet away, basically just saying, I dare you to kick it out there. And because those guys aren't hitting those shots, Luca tries to basically fake, like he's going to bring it back out to get the help to recede away and then attack again. Luca's got to figure out how to manage this a little bit better. Maybe it's implementing a little more of that mid-range game, not floaters, not runners. And the reason I say that is because we saw a couple times in the game where he was shooting on the move where OKC gets the rebound and they're off to the races. They got a four on three or a four on two break. And you're just like, dude, you can't, you cannot be in that position where Luca and Gafford are out of the play and the thunder are sprinting the other direction. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the free throw discrepancy in this game. Uh, OKC in the first half shot 22 free throws. Overall, OKC was 21 of 28 at the line. The free throws ended up very similar. Overall, Dallas was 17 of 25. But again, it's that OKC had 22 free throws in the first half. Really allowed them to pace the game, get Dallas in a little bit of foul trouble, and just kind of handle their business. Like... Shea had 29, 9, and 9, 8 of 19 from the field, 2 of 4 from 3, 11 of 13 at the line. Man, oh man. Now, I know Luca shot 10 free throws, so I can't be like, oh, I imagine if Luca got to shoot that many. But at the very least, that's some serious work. Like, that. that's a lot. That, again, a little bit James Harden-like, uh, getting to the line that many times and getting that many points out of it. When you're sub-20 points, if not for free throws, and instead you had like a 30-piece. That's pretty solid. Um, He also had a couple blocks and a steal, so really good stuff from Shea. He's a plus 21. J-Dub, he goes for 10 of his 18 in the fourth quarter as they just put this game away. Dallas made a run late in the third quarter to cut it down to one, and then OKC came out in the fourth quarter and was kind of like, all right, we're done. And that seemed to be like a stretch. It felt like in this game one, there was just several times where OKC had another gear they could just kick it into and Dallas couldn't do it. Whether that was, again, just recommitting to that game plan of clogging the paint entirely when Luka was driving and blocking the ability for the law pass. They're also good, OKC is, at holding to that. They don't, like, they're not allowing, they're not jumping prematurely. They're not putting themselves out of position. They're being patient with it. And part of that is just the confidence that they have that much attention collapsing down. But they're going to live with those corner threes until Dallas can actually really hurt them with it. And in that fourth quarter, man, J-Dub, you didn't just see it defensively, like guarding Luka or anything like that. You saw it all over the place. He hits like three shots in a row, it felt like, in that fourth quarter as they just pulled away. 
And he was really ho hum in that game until then, like offensively speaking. So you got yourself a little bit of a hole here. You're going to have to deal with it. Chet Holmgren, uh, again, 19 points, seven rebounds, eight of 16 from the field and three blocks, two steals. That's, that's heavy lifting, man. I, I think lively, lively. If you were going off of that, like, yeah, Chet's obviously the rookie of the year runner up. Um, any other year, that's not a Wimby year. He's your rookie of the year. But I don't feel like Lively is, it's not like Lively couldn't have a similar effect, defensively speaking, for Dallas. I think he absolutely can. We just didn't get a chance to see it here. But we need more from Lively in that. We need a better game, too. For Lou Dort, again, seven points, four boards. He's a plus 18 overall, despite only being two of nine from the field. And uh, yeah, that pretty much speaks to it. Wiggins gave him 16 off the bench. The other Jalen Williams gave him 11 and nine off the bench. Like Isaiah Joe came in and hit a couple of big threes in that fourth quarter as OKC pulled away for that last time. Like really, really balanced stuff from Oklahoma City. And for Dallas, it's yeah, Luca, not a great game for him, but still about 20 points. Kyrie about, you know, Kyrie had 20 points. Gafford gave you 16. PJ Washington gave you 10. Uh, Josh Green off the bench gave you 11. So like the points are fairly distributed, but without those heavy hitters in Luca and Kyrie giving you their normal high 20s, low to mid 30s, everything looks a little bit worse. Now, OKC in five postseason games now has yet to allow an opponent to score more than 95 points. That's a point of concern for me. Again, this Thunder defense thrives on turnovers. They are very balanced, very grounded. They're very versatile. And even offensively, because they have Chet, they can play a five out. They can spread you out completely so that they can actually run that screen and roll with you. Dallas does not have enough shooting to give them the same spacing. The, the gravity of Luka and Kyrie will create those opportunities at times. But with a really good athletic defensive team like OKC and the kind of versatility that you have with Chet, you're just going to be hard pressed to contend with that a little bit. So round one goes to OKC to kids credit. He's had a good track record of responding well in game two. Really. It was just that warriors Western F conference final series. And again, that's the game Dallas should have had. That was the one where they were up double digits with like four or five minutes left. And then ended up losing in heartbreaking fashion. And that was, that was basically it. Cause then they lose game three scrap together a win in game four to avoid the sweep and get gentlemen sweeped in game five. So that's what Dallas has to do here. That's where they're sitting currently. They've got to figure out a response to what OKC is doing. And it might just be as simple as run the Luka high pick and roll a little less often. Let Kyrie be a little bit more of the creator here. And you got to just get better shooting out of your, out of your role players from those corners. You got to find a way to lean just a little bit more. And I know this is the tough part because as I'm talking about like Tim Hardaway Jr. It's like, yeah, but that's a that's a defensive liability. Like, yeah, yeah, it is. And OKC's really good at abusing that stuff right now. But I don't know, man. I'm not going to get too high or too low on one game. Every time you lose, it feels like you'll never win again. Every time you win, it feels like you'll never lose again. It's all a chess match. It's all a matter of punch, counter punch. So the question is, how does Dallas counter punch? Right now, OKC looks pretty dominant. But their game plan worked to perfection. They got to stick to exactly what they were doing. It was Dallas kind of left scrambling, trying to figure out how to counter it. And they didn't really have a solid counter in action. That's where it gets to kid not being the best at in game adjustments. That's where that is a little bit of a concern. If the, if the original prep and game plan doesn't work, can you adapt? I have more confidence in OKC and their ability to counter than I do in Dallas right now with kid. That's just, that's just my feeling. Dagonal, I think is fantastic. And, uh, you know, kid, his players love him. Kyrie loves him. So it's, that's worth something. And he's obviously had more success here in the last three years than the last 10 plus years of Dallas as a franchise. So I get it, but those warts are still warts, no matter how you look at it. But let me know in the comments, how are you feeling after game one? Do you feel better with game two? Do you think game one is just OKC being the more rested team riding that high of that home crowd? Or do you think it's a little bit of a problem for Dallas here. Let me know below, like the video, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, guys, remember, every legend 
was once a prospect. Peace.